Hi, my name is Joseph Douglas Perlo, and I'm addicted to clubbing. You're probably asking yourself, how could this innocent infant be addicted to the club scene at only five months old? The truth is, I was exposed to the club culture far before I wiggled my way into the real world. Lest you forget, I was cooped up for nine months in my mom's belly. The boom boom womb, as I called it. Alone with nothing but my thoughts and that steady bass drum beat, courtesy of my mom's heart. Oops, 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 oops. I admit, that sound was a bit annoying at first, but I quickly grew to love it. It became the soundtrack to my life in utero. I passed the time by choreographing dance routines to that mesmerizing beat. It wasn't long before I was bobbing my head, swinging my hips, and fist pumping my way into the arms of my parents. Life on the other side was good. I had it all. The unconditional love of my mom and dad, and the constant attention of my grandparents, aunts and uncles, and their friends. I was coddled, doted on, spoiled with affection, dressed adorably, and gushed over endlessly. Wherever I went, the party seemed to follow. And party we did. I quickly learned how to use my cherubic charm to get whatever I wanted. At first, it was small things, like a diaper change or a burp-inducing back massage. Later, it escalated to more serious stuff, like staying up past 7 p.m. and sitting at the adult table during family gatherings. One weekend at the beach, temptation got the best of me, and I made the mistake of experimenting with an adult beverage or two. If anyone's curious, Miller Lite and Merlot don't mix so well. I have the before, during, still during, soon after, a little later, and next day photos to prove it. Oh, Miss Fortune, the hangover lasted three days. All I could do was prop myself up on the couch and stare blankly at the Cartoon Network. Never again, my friends. Never again. With all the partying during the day, the nights became more and more difficult to get through. Not due to an inability to sleep, or the monsters that I'm convinced reside under my crib, but because of the absence of, well, the absence of that beat that so often fueled my dance routines. Which is why I began frequenting the local clubs after hours, where the music was driven by the same familiar bass beat that typified my fetal months. What's more, glow sticks abounded, there was no shortage of ladies, and the dance floor became the canvas upon which I let my artistic juices flow, often culminating in carefully choreographed fits of fist pumping. Luckily, my twilight escapades went unnoticed by my parents, probably because they were genuinely happy to be getting a good night's sleep for a change. What my loved ones did notice, however, was the change in my overall demeanor. Before I knew it, my nightlife persona was overshadowing the real me. When I look through the pictures taken at the time, it's like I'm looking at a different person. Take this shot, for instance. Aunt Julie is posing for what she thinks will be an adorable photo, fit to be added to her Facebook album. Little did she know that I'd catch sight of a scantily clad broad out, the, out of the corner of my eye and ruin the shot. I mean, look at me. I'm all like, Hey baby, how you doing? You down for coming back to my crib? Literally? Or how about this one? I'm all like, Yo, how dope does my v-neck t-shirt look with the sleeves rolled up? Check out these guns, dude. I'm not even really flexing. Seriously, I can bench like 225. Easy. Oh boy, like I said, I had become a different person. They say you can't start down the road to recovery until you hit rock bottom. For me, rock bottom came in the form of a strained back muscle. What happened was, I was basically putting on a poppin' and lockin' clinic at this club one night when this guy challenged me to a dance-off. I won the battle, holla, but I managed to throw up my back in the course of doing so. My parents took the news of the injury, and more importantly, the after-hours lifestyle I was leading, pretty hard. 
I felt badly about misleading them and promised to hang up my dancing shoes. As painful as it was, the rehab was pretty sweet. The treatment basically consisted of a slightly modified tubby, one in which warm, pressurized water was used to target my upper hiney region. To pass the time, I took to unconventional low-impact hobbies, like flip cup. The rest of my recovery was spent in my silly swing. Much like FDR, who never allowed the press to photograph him while he was in his wheelchair. I too was very sensitive about being seen in such a vulnerable state. I mean, I did have a reputation to uphold within the club community. I couldn't risk the ridicule and the respect of my friends. After I recovered from my injury, I swore I wouldn't go back to my old ways. I told my parents and friends I'd stop drinking Red Bull, snuffed out my glow sticks, and stopped stuffing my diaper. Sadly, in a matter of weeks, I was sneaking out to the clubs again, despite the promises I made to everyone. I thought my ruse was a success, until Sal, my best friend and wingman, confronted me about my relapse. He had heard from a mutual friend that I had been spotted at a popular club in the city. I asked him not to tell my parents, which he agreed to, but only if I was able to beat him at a round of golf at LBI Country Club. Otherwise, he'd let my secret be known. Never one to back down from a challenge, I took him up on it. Little did I know, there are much larger plans in motion. Dave Chappelle once asked, What did the five fingers say to the face? If I recall correctly, I believe the answer was, Slap. That's what was waiting for me behind the doors of the LBI Country Club that warm summer afternoon. A stinging slap of reality in the form of a carefully orchestrated intervention, courtesy of my parents, extended family, and friends. Suffice it to say that I was a little shocked. This shot pretty much sums it up. My first instinct was to lash out at Sal. I felt betrayed and, quite honestly, a bit embarrassed by it all. I had to be restrained for a bit until I got my wits about me. Once I settled down, I had the opportunity to let it all sink in. Between the stories about my lifestyle and how it affected all those around me, and the pleas to put an end to my self-destructive habits, I had a lot to digest. When all was said and done, I was emotionally and physically exhausted. That night, I got the best night of sleep I've ever had. When I awoke the next morning, I was a changed little man. Well, that's my story, folks. I haven't stepped foot in a club in over a month now. Now, that's not to say I'm letting my gift go to waste. I mix in plenty of practice while on my changing table at home. Have I lost a step or two? I guess that's for you to decide. If you ask me, I don't think the club could even handle me right now. Make me pull. Came to party till I came no more. Celebrate cause that's all.